Hey, what's up, Kemp Peeps? I want to take a couple minutes and take some time to show you an example about standard versus non-standard conditions. Um, and I think that this analogy may be helpful when you're trying to understand something that can be a little tricky. So I'm going to take a look at a general reaction here, right? Reactants forming products. And what I want you to think about is water forming urine, right? This reaction is thermodynamically favorable, right? It's gonna happen, right? You drink water, you're gonna have to go pee. For a galvanic cell, what that means is the concentrations of the solutions in your cathode and anode half cells are each one molar. This, for this example, I want you to think about kind of where you generally are most points throughout the day, right? You're probably drinking as you go, but you know, there's no real need or urgency to go to the bathroom, right? To go pee, to urinate. You have uh, essentially, we're going to say roughly consumed a certain amount of water equal to amount of urine that you had gone to the bathroom for previously, right? So you're pretty comfortable at this point, right? That's what we're going to consider our standard conditions, right? And relating this to voltaic cell, if we had one molar concentrations of the product, to one molar contrast in the reactants, our Q value would be equal to one. And that's when we have standard conditions. Notice this little not symbol here, right? Now I want you to think about what happens if you chug a bunch of water, right? If you chug a bunch of water, our reactant is gonna be huge, right? That's in the denominator of our uh, Q, our reaction quotient, right? And you haven't gone to the bathroom in a while, so your products are really, really tiny right? What happens to your urgency or your need to pee, right? You're going to have to go pee really, really bad. You're going to be jumping around. You're like, oh my gosh, I have to be, I have to be. The potential to go pee is going to go up. So when Q is less than one, when you have a bunch of reactants, not a lot of products, your potential to go pee is going to go down, right? So Q less than one, cell potential increases. This is non-standard conditions. And then lastly, think about the opposite, right? If you just go to the bathroom, if you just urinate, right? You don't have a lot of react, you haven't chugged a bunch of water, right? You just went pee, you made a lot of product, right? So your numerator now is very large. Your reactant's kind of tiny, right? This means that your Q, your reaction uh, quotient at this point is greater than one. A lot of products, not a lot of reactants. In this situation, you probably feel a lot of relief. The urgency to go pee again isn't great at all. You're like, ah, yes, much better, right? And so when you think about your uh, cell potential and how it relates to these non-standard conditions, right? When you have a lot of product, not a lot of reactant, the potential to make product goes down. It's still going to happen, right? You're still eventually gonna to need to go pee, but recognize that that potential isn't as great. All right, I hope that this example helps. We'll talk more about it in class, but be aware that sometimes you'll have standard conditions where the, ratio, where the concentrations of your reactant and product solutions are one molar each, and sometimes you can adjust those uh, product or reactant concentrations to increase or decrease uh, your cell potential respectively. And as you think about uh, identifying whether or not the cell potential will increase or decrease, you want to think about what happens to the value of Q. All right, hope that helps. Have a great day.